What's going on guys? We are back and we have got the buck that we have been working on for the last couple weeks. He's fully dried up. Best way to tell, just stick your finger down in their ear, check, make sure there's no moisture from the modeling clay down in there. That, that spot right there usually is the last place on a deer to dry. So that's how I always check mine. All right, well, welcome back to the Cedar Ridge Chronicles. Today I'm going to be painting this deer up. Uh, we got him epoxied the other day. If y'all would like to see how I did that, uh, I've got another video uh, on my channel that where I show that where I actually epoxied this deer. Uh, if you'd like to see how to mount a deer, I, this this deer right here is the same one that I used uh, to video that I mounted. Uh, if y'all would, if y'all have not subscribed yet, if you'll look right down here on the bottom right hand side of your screen, there'll be a little red arrow. If you'll smash that subscribe button, we will get started. All right, let me show y'all the equipment I use. This right here is a central pneumatic pump from Harbor Freight. You know, I've told y'all before, you know, that I spend as little money as I possibly can to keep my overhead almost at zero. Uh, I got to pay insurance on my shop and you've got to buy supplies and you've got to pay bills. So if you're going to do this for a living, don't be stupid and go out and buy a whole bunch of top notch equipment and end up putting yourself in the hole before you even realize how much uh, business you're going to be doing. And as you get going, you know, you can kind of adjust accordingly, obviously. But one of the biggest mistakes I see business owners make that are open to new businesses is trying to buy too much fancy equipment uh, too early in their career. And I don't remember what this pump right here costs, but it, it's cheap. I mean, it's really cheap. Only downside to it is it doesn't have adjustable air pressure. What I do, this is the, this is the air gun I use. It's an Iwata Neo. It's the cheapest gun that they have at Hobby Lobby. I say it's the cheapest. It's the cheapest decent gun that they have at Hobby Lobby. Uh, I've had it for five, probably five years now along with this uh, air compressor and so far so good. Uh, since the compressor does not have adjustable air pressure, what I do, I take the cover off the back side of my air gun and I will loosen this adjustment up. You can, take, you can loosen this up and take this needle out and the further in or out you put that needle, the more it actually closes up your tip, which allows the paint to come out. So what I do is, depending on my paint thickness, uh, some paints are a lot thicker than others. And what I do is I'll adjust that needle in and out to allow more or less paint flow, you know, which is a little bit more cumbersome than using a low pressure uh, compressor. But when you're talking about the difference between a $400 compressor or a $60 compressor, I mean, you know, it ain't that big a deal if you're rich, but I'm not. I like to spend my money on hunting and fishing. So I just move the needle back and forth. I mean, it doesn't take just a few minutes to get some paint on a deer anyway. So like I said, to me, it's just what makes sense. This one ever stops working, I may go and get me a, a different kind. I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see when that happens. One other thing that y'all want to get is a respirator. Right there's the one that I use. I'm not going to be using it while I do this one deer. I'm going to leave my door open, kind of get me a little bit of ventilation in here, but I want to be able to talk while I'm trying to explain how to do uh, this paint. So, but normally when I'm here painting, always wear your respirator. Uh, you have to, if you want to keep your lungs clean and not have any kind of future problems, especially if you're down here doing this, you know, for a living, you've got to keep that thing on. Uh, they're not too uncomfortable. Uh, but you, you'd be glad that you did in several years. Uh, if you're using oil-based paints, it is critical. Oil-based will ruin, absolutely ruin your lungs. I use all water-based, easier to clean up, uh, but it's still good to use that respirator. Well, let's look at our paint, what we got on the paint. I like the Createx. That's my favorite kind that I've used so far. I do use Polytranspar on the flesh that's the flesh color uh the poly transport is really thin uh, it's a lot thinner than the createx and i like to use transparent also uh, they make an opaque and the opaque is is it covers 
really thick, but it's also a very thick paint. So you've got to have either a really big opening on your uh, airbrush gun or thin it down considerably. The transparent is already thin enough. It works very well, but it's also a lot thicker than the polytranspar, so it covers better, especially doing the nose and ears, stuff like that. Uh, the colors that I use, I said this, the polytranspar, that's flesh, is the actual name of that color. This is a transparent white. This one right here is called sand. In the Createx transparent, I so said just make sure you get get transparent. Uh, this one I've actually got an M on the top, which stands for mixed. <laughs> In this bottle, I've got dark brown, and this is transparent black. You can see right there, and I just mix it. It's probably really close to half and half, uh, maybe a little bit more black. I don't like the nose as being solid black. A lot of people paint them black. They, I mean, that's fine. And, you know, in their defense, all deer look completely different. So you can have, I mean, every one of these deer that I've got in here to paint today, when I finish all these up, they're all gonna look like a deer that I painted. Uh, but they may not look like the deer did when they were still alive because every deer has an individual look just like people do. You don't notice it until you really get to looking at, at the deer that's brought in your shop or deer that you see just on images on the internet, but they've all got different colors. Uh, even on their nose pads, it's not just their hair colors, but they're very, very individual. I would say that probably the number one thing that sets taxidermists apart is their, their brand of mount that they do. You can take 10 different taxidermists that do fantastic work and still pick out which deer, which taxidermist mounted based on the look that deer has. And I don't think it's it's really a right or wrong uh, kind of a, an argument. I think it's more of that taxidermist portrayal of what they think a white tail looks like that is the prettiest. Um, some people paint them with more of a bright white throat patch. They'll actually highlight all the throat patches, the eye, the white eye circles and all that. Uh, I like to leave my natural. I like each deer to look like that deer does. But at the same time, I like a little bit more brown in my nose pad. Uh, I'll, I'll make it just black enough to where you can still tell that it's not solid black. It'll, you'll be able to tell that there's a little bit of brown in there is about how I mix mine. Uh, but I said it's just one of those things. When you, when you look at a, say you look at 10 different deer that are live deer pictures, you may find one where it's like, man, I want my mounts to look like that. And you just kind of keep mixing your color schedule until you figure out how to make your deer look like that. And then it becomes your brand. And that, you know, it's kind of what sets you apart. There's going to be people that think your deer looks the best. And there's going to be people who think that somebody else's deer looks the best. But it may just come down to that that color scheme and, and different paint schedule that you use or, or, you know, just the way that you think the ears need to be positioned or the eyelids or the eye uh, expression needs to be uh, changes all of that. So it's, you know, that's one thing that's really interesting to me about doing taxidermy work. But anyway, today you're going to see my brand and that's the, that's the only colors that I use unless I'm doing antler repair, you know, stuff like that. But anyway, I'm going to get my camera strapped up on my chest. And I'm going to do the best I can to try and keep this in the frame so that y'all can kind of see what's going on. But let's get going. All right, the way that I like to do it, I, I start out with certain colors in certain orders on purpose. As I layer these colors, I'm not actually gonna let them dry in between stages. And the reason I do that, if y'all ever watch any Bob Ross painting on TV, he uses wet on wet oil paint. And he will layer paint while it's still wet in order to get certain color effects and let that blend together. And to me, a deer isn't any different. Uh, where you've got transition lines where the pink meets the white inside of an ear or the flesh meets the white and black on the inside of the nostrils, different, different things like that. It doesn't 
have a sharp transition line like you would paint on the hood of a car. Uh, this is more of, you know, it's, it's a live creature. So you've got, it, it just kind of blends all together and I'll paint it accordingly. I'll just leave everything wet and just let the paint kind of do some of the work. But what I like to do is start out with white. I'll go ahead and spray the entire inside of the ears. This is one thing that a lot of people do not do that I like to do that gives me a little bit of that brand for my own mounts. But you can look at 10 different deer and some of them have got so much hair on the inside of their ear that their ear is snow white. Other ones have almost no hair and they're almost either flesh colored or brown. So I'm gonna see how fast that went. And that's just a pretty, just a pretty white look. Do the other side right quick. But most certainly when you get started, go ahead and buy you an airbrush. Uh, the first deer that I did, uh, first several deer that I did actually, I was using a paintbrush and trying to do it all by hand and uh, steps like this right here are impossible with a paintbrush. Uh, you'll actually get, you get too much paint all over the ear hairs. You just can't get to the skin uh, for all the fur. All right, so we got our white. Make sure this deer doesn't need any, any white touch up anywhere. Go ahead and use a little bit of that while I've got it in my gun. I don't see anywhere that that might need it. What I do, I just run a little bit of water through my airbrush, clean that white out of there. Next thing is your sand color. I really like this color around the eyes. Blends really well with the surrounding uh, fur. But I'll pretty much fill in nearly all the way around that eye and then that tear duct. like that just gonna color up all your epoxy give some color to that old leather that's dried in there kind of bring that back to a, a flesh tone and any overspray that you get on your fur you can take a little wire brush after it's dry and it just comes right off of there. It is, it's a piece of cake. So don't worry about any of that. All right. That's all that I use of that. this up just a bit here it's a little too high for the camera okay we're gonna move on to the flesh you don't see how I mean it's just so thin it's like water And what I do with this, I'll go to the inside of the ear, way down in the ear. Give it a pretty generous spray down there, get a little bit of color. 
And on inside the ear, you can see three places that come up in between where the hair lines run right down through the inner ear. Just take that pink and just brush it out. Just like that, that's all I use. From far away, it almost looks like it's just white, but it gives it just enough color to where it, it kind of reintroduces the that skin, you know, color through that, that white paint. Just like that. All right. Now, now for the nose and the bottom lip. I'll use flesh on this bottom lip. Use it to paint the nose pad. The inside of the nostrils. Just like that. And that's all. That's all the flesh you need. Guys, y'all gonna think I'm crazy, but we are just about finished. I've heard me say this a million times. Don't make it any harder than it has to be. And you know, you can spend as much time or as little as you need to. Uh, the more time that you spend prepping this deer for this stage, the faster this stage is gonna be. All right, now I've got my mix. This is gonna be my black and brown mix. Not gonna need a whole lot of this, just a few drops. All right, now on the eyes, I put just a little bit right around the eye to darken that up. And then I'll just put a little bit in the tear duct and move your airbrush kind of away from that tear duct where it just kind of blends in. You only see how well that blended. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I can get, get y'all a little bit of light here so y'all can see what this looks like. All right, y'all see that right there. Y'all see that paint is still really wet where it's trying to blend. You see how the colors just blend right together and turns almost the exact same color as the deer's hide. And I'm going to use it right around the edges of the nostril, just like that. Now for the nose. Start with the bottom lip. Like to do the bottom lip, just keep a little bit of pink right there in the in the edge of the mouth. Let me see if I can't turn this a little bit. Y'all really need to see how this right here is done, if possible. Let's see if I can get this deer in a position where you can really watch it. Maybe a little bit better. Okay. Well, the top part of the nose, I finished it completely in. Pretty much dark, covering up all of the flesh. And as I come down the nose, 
we're going to get further and further away with a lighter and lighter coat of that dark color black and brown mix. Y'all can see where it's fading into that flesh tone. Now that deer, not all deer, you'll see it on a lot of pictures, will have a little dark line right down the middle of their nose, right to their mouth. I'll add that in just slightly. Y'all can see that. Then I'll outline the edge of the nose on both sides. Kind of fade the edge of those nostrils into the nose pad. And then I'll fade that on down into that bottom, just like that. Now on the edge where the black fur is, put a little bit of highlight come into there, it meets the lip, darken that up just a little bit. And on my epoxy video, you remember there was a little hole right here. I've already put flocking in that hole, filled it in so that it looks like fur again. And just airbrush right over that. Connect it back up with the nostril, just like that. And I'll make that black going up into the mouth, up into the lip right there. Just a little bit more dark right there. Just like that. And then what I'll do, like on these places like this, where the deer's been fighting or has any scrapes from rocks or anything else, you can take that dark color, keep your airbrush kind of a long way off, and just barely missed it for just a second. And it's gonna blend in. See how much that, that just blended that color right in there. Probably do the same thing to the, the top up here. Where it's got these big scars on its nose. I love scars on the mount, but you don't want it to, when it dries up, you don't wanna be able to see that, that light and dark color leather. So I'll just take, take this and just give it a little bit of color, just like that. You can still see the scars, but it's not old nasty dried up leather look. Okay. Y'all, that is pretty much done. Y'all, that's pretty much done. Let this paint on these eyes dry just a little bit. And you can take your thumb, see that paint's wiping off? Right before the paint completely dries, you can get almost every bit of that paint off of those eyes with your finger. If you accidentally touch the edge and rub any paint off on the edge, you take your little bitty liner brush and a little bit of that matching paint and just touch it back up. Very, very easy to do. So it just comes right off. See on the eyes through the, the paint, that paint line is, I just rub it right off with my finger. So it needs to be a little bit drier to do this. Makes it a little easier. It don't smear as bad. But if you let it dry completely, then you got to scrape it off. Take a chance of scratching your eyeglass. Now 
But I'll finish that up in just a few minutes. Which I'd say that looks like a pretty good looking deer head. But y'all can see how that paint, I mean, it just brings that deer to life. I mean, it just makes it look so good. And any overspray, like I said, take you a, just a regular wire brush and you can hit the edges of that fur and it just takes that overspray right off. Also, as your ear dries, you take that right there and go against the hair. It'll pull that hair, so it's pulling that hair back out, away from the paint, and then just lightly brush it back down. And then your hair won't be matted inside your ear. It'll also get all the, especially the flesh colored paint, it'll get it out of the hair and look like you don't have pink hair on your deer. So I don't know, some folks may like that. But anyway, guys, I hope that that was informative enough. I know it wasn't a very long video, but you know, the KISS method will go a long way <laughs> in most everything. And I certainly do use it in my taxidermy shop because a deer is just a deer. And as much as they all look so different, I mean, you, you can't make them all match. <laughs> but get your own brand, figure out what kind of paint colors you like. The more you do it, the more you use it, you know, the more you may find that you like something that I don't like or that you think looks more like a deer than this, and man, go with it. There will always be people that think the same way you do and you'll end up with a big customer base just based on your ideas. And that's the way to do it because the happier you are with your deer, the happier your customers are gonna be with you. So guys, y'all have a good afternoon and I appreciate y'all watching and uh, take care.